Hello sir and hello everyone. Today I am going to report what I have learned for the topic Erickson psych Psychosocial Theory of Devel Development and um, Kohlberg's Stages of Moral Development. Let us discuss first the Erickson Psychosocial Theory of Development. So Erickson's stages of psychosocial development is very relevant, highly regarded, and meaningful theory. Life is, is a continuous process involving learning and trials which helps us to grow. Erickson's enlightening theory guides us and helps to tell us why. So I have learned that Erickson's psychosocial theory contains of eight stages of life. The first stage Infancy is approximately the first year or year and a half of life. So the trust versus the mistrust. So in this stage, an infant is utterly dependent. Developing trust is based on dependability and quality of the child's caregiver. So for example, let's say a mother feeds her baby in the morning. So the next time the child is hungry, they will cry hoping the mother will hear the cry and feed the child again. So trust will go stronger if the mother uh, fulfills the needs of child. So if the mother fails to feed the child, their hopes will be dashed and the mistrust may form. The second stage for Erickson's theory is autonomy versus shame and doubt. So this occurs between the age two or three years. So at this stage, children are focused on developing developing a greater sense of control. So example is uh, toilet cleaning and also they begin to feed and dress themselves. This is how toddler strives for autonomy. It is essential for parents not to be overprotective at this stage. So the third stage is initiative versus guilt. So this occurs during preschool age. So at this stage, children begin to develop leadership skills and initiate activities. So while having specific needs that may not always be of use. So example, initiative is develop if the child is encouraged to make plans or take charge. So exploration of role playing only helps to further this development along. So if a child is discouraged or kept away from group play, they may develop a sense of guilt. The fourth stage of Erickson's theory is industry versus inferiority. So this occurs between ages 7 years to 13 years old. So at, when a child is successfully navigates this stage, they develop competency. So competency becomes a big part of confidence as we develop in life and plays a strong role in the next stage of identity. So for example, of industry is that a child is encouraged to try and explore. Thus, they understand that they are capable of solving problems on their own. And then an example of inferior inferiority is that a child is discouraged of, from developing their skills and constantly viewed in a negative light. The next stage, which is the fifth, fifth stage of Erickson's theory, is identity versus the role confusion. So this takes place between the ages of 12 to 19 years old. So during this stage, uh, adolescents need to develop a sense of self and personal identity through an intense exploration of personal values, beliefs, and goals. So example, an adolescent is a, uh, adolescent attempts to establish their own identities and see themselves separate from their parents. So the uh, next stage, the sixth stage of Erickson's psychosocial theory is indifference.
intimacy versus the isolation. This takes place during young adulthood between ages of approximately 18 to 40 years old. During this stage, um, uh, the major conflict, conflict centers in forming intimate, loving relationship with other people. So example, those who have intimacy are successful in their ability to open up to others about their lives and the ability to have personal romantic relationships. The example of isolation also includes depression, lack of close friends, separation from family, and loneliness. So let's move on to the seventh stage of Erickson's theory, which is the generativity and stagnation. This occurs during age 40 to 65 years old. So, in this stage, adults strive to create or nurture things, often through parenting, contributing to the community, or some other positive change. So, some example of stagnation is feeling stuck in a monotonous routine without personal growth or fulfillment. So, lacking of sense of purpose or direction so, and avoiding responsibilities and commitments so some examples of generativity is caring for your children by guiding them through life volunteering volunteering uh, mentoring engaging in community uh, community activity foster fostering other people growth and work Finally, the eighth stage of Erickson's psychosocial theory is integrity versus despair. So this occurs during uh, age 65 and ends at death and is focused on reflecting back on life. So at this point of in development, people look back on the events of their life and determine if they are happy within the life that they, they live or if they regret the, thing, the things they did or didn't do. So some example of ego integrity is you are able to accept ups and downs of past lives. So while in despair are those feeling discontent and regret when they look back upon past lives. And the reason why uh, why we study Erickson's theory is that this model identifies the different goals, challenges, and concerns at each, sta at each stage of life, which helps educators and parents alike guide and encourage children in the right direction. So our understanding in this developmental stage are common to all children and which differ from learner to learner will and will influence the kinds of expectations you have for your learners and our behavior towards them. We already know the eight stages of Erickson's psychosocial theory of development in our previous topics. And now we will proceed to the next topic which is the Kohlberg's stages of moral development. Kohlberg's theory consists of six stages which is divided into three major levels. So the first level is pre-conventional level. In this level, Moral reasoning is based on the consequence, consequence or result of the act, not on the whether the act itself is good or bad. So this level consists of two stages. The first is punishment or obedience. One is motivated by fear of punishment will act in order to avoid punishment. This is common in children, but adults are also expressing this type of reasoning. reasoning. The second stage of Kohlberg's theory under this uh, first level uh, 
is the mutual benefit. So one is motivated to act by benef by the benefit that one may obtain later. So you can scratch my back. For example, you can scratch my back. I'll scratch yours. So I individuals have what's in it for me. So thinking. Uh, what's in it for me thinking? So individuals act based on the self-advantage or benefit that one may acquire doing the action. The second level of Goldberg's theory is conventional. So in this level, moral reasoning is based on the conventions or norms of society. This may include approval of others, law and order. So under this level of conventional, we have third and fourth stage. So let's talk first the third stage, which, and, uh, which is the uh, social approval. One is motivated by what others expect in behavior, good boy or good girl. The person acts because he or she values how he or she will appear to others. He or she gives importance on what people will think or say. The next is the fourth stage, which is the law and order. So one is motivated to act in order to uphold law and order. The person will follow the law because it is the law. The third level of Goldberg's theory is post-conventional. So in this level, moral reasoning is based on injuring or consistent principles. It is not just recognizing the law, but the principles behind the law. Individuals may disobey rules if inconsistent uh, with their own principle. So under, under this uh, level, we have here the fifth and the sixth stage. So let's talk first the, the fifth stage. Uh, the fifth stage is social contract. So laws that are wrong can be changed. One will act based on social justice and the common good. So each person holds different opinions rights and values and should be mutually respected laws that are wrong can be changed to meet greatest good for the greatest number of people and the next stage of Kohlberg's theory under uh, this third level of which is the post post conventional is the universal principles this is associated when the development of one's uh, with the development of one's cons conscience having a set of standards that uh, drives to drives one to possess moral responsibility to make societal changes regardless of consequences to oneself moral reasoning is deeply internalized and based and is based on abstract reasoning using universal ethical principles they act because it is right and not because it is instrumental expected or legal this drives them to possess morality uh, moral responsibility for social changes again uh, Kohlberg's theory is about theory of moral development so uh, this theory consists of eight stages so that eight stages is divided into three levels the pre-conventional level the conventional and the post-conventional level so under pre-conventional level we have punishment or obedience and mutual benefit so and uh, the second level which is which is conventional we have here the third stage the social approval and the law and order so third level which is the post-conventional 
we have here social contract and universal principles. Um, as a future teacher, the importance of moral development stage is that teachers can understand their students best. So, as the theory has contributed to every stage of growth of a te child, teachers can analyze their students' behavior. So, it will help them change their teaching methodology with the children's growing, growing age. It enables teacher to understand the different levels of moral understanding of learners. It enables teacher to give proper guidance to students about their moral behavior. So that's all and that's what I have learned in Erickson psychosocial theory of development and Kohlberg stages of moral development.